Okay, hello. Uh, today I'm going to walk you through homework four. So uh, I recommend you to read homework first. Uh, today I'm not going to show you uh, my R screen or I'm not going to do line by line coding on this video because you have done three homework already and I believe you are more you are now more familiar with coding what what you what you can do it's like translation so I will leave that last stage to you so I will explain what you have to do and how you can do that but uh, you have to finish that by yourself okay so read the homework first uh, then I am going to uh, do this uh, like Basically, to what you are going to do today in this homework is similar, uh, like regression models. Basically, you are going to run a few regression models, but there are two additional new components to that. One is to define a dummy variable. So I will explain how you can do that and what kind of commands you need uh, to do that. Also, you have to carry out a hypothesis test particularly a uh, joint hypothesis test. So, uh, and I will explain how you can implement these things on R and then uh, we'll just explain what you have to do on R, but you have to finish your code by yourself, right? Of course, you can just borrow the same code you have done in the earlier homework. Uh, or you can search on Google to uh, to 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 finish to complete your uh, your code. But I believe it should not be that difficult, right? Uh, if you have done the earlier homework already. Okay. So let me start. So if you read the homework, then you'd see that uh, one of the key components component of this uh, regression is education. So EDUC is education is the years of schooling in your data. So I will I will assume that you have already loaded the data to R, right? The so then then what is different from the uh, the earlier uh, regression models is that we are not going to use education directly, but we are going to make education groups instead of years of education, right? So I will classify the observations into three groups. The first group is no college, no college education. That means ed the years of education is uh, 12 or lower. So 12 years of education means like uh, high school graduation. And so no means no group, no dummy variable, the, the variable named no takes one. If education, uh, the last grade completed was 12 or lower, right? And most high school graduation, otherwise zero. There is another variable named some, some college education, so some takes one if education is greater than 12, strictly greater than 12, so more than high school, but did not complete. So 16 means uh, 16 means four-year college education, but so this group like took one year or two year or three year college, right? But could not receive a degree. So and the last group is degree. Degree is college degree group. Those who have college degree, uh, uh, they are, they have education 16 or uh, greater, right? 16 years is like a four year college degree. So I will uh, classify uh, observations into these three groups and I will make a dummy variable for each group. Okay. So mathematically, it is pretty easy to understand what is going on. 
but how do we implement that on R? So this is how you do it. So we are going to use if else command. So this is one of the uh, basic command in R. Uh, so we are going to give the give the condition. So in R, you have to translate this equation this way. So we define no variable using if else command and if else command requires three arguments. Okay, let me explain. So no is the variable name. So if you want if you wanted uh, another name, then you may change it. Another problem. So you may change the variable name if you if you want. And command. And the first argument is the condition. So we have to. Oh, by the way, let me turn off my face. It's not important now. Uh, so this condition, based on this condition, or uh, if else command tells if the condition is satisfied or not, right? So it checks if the condition is satisfied or not. And as you know, the dollar dollar mark uh, denotes like a variable in this data set. The data set name is data, but you could use a different data name like HW4 or like HW4 data, whatever. So this part could be different if you used a different data name. And variable name is educate, E-D-U-C. So this is um, the default data variable in the file. Anyhow, so this variable is smaller than or equal to 12. So this is, so this inequality and e equality is this like weak inequality, right? Smaller than and equal to 12. This is the condition you enter and you have to put two numbers. If this is right, it takes one. And if the condition is wrong, then uh, the variable takes zero. So you define a variable, assign these values, right? Based on this condition. This is how you interpret uh, this, this definition into R, right? So then the second variable, some, some college is a little different because there are actually two conditions one in inequality and another inequality so for someone to be some college in the some college group that guy should satisfy two conditions first her education should be greater than 12 at the same time her education should be smaller than strictly smaller than 16. so these two conditions two inequalities must be satisfied at the same time and then we use this syntax right so basically the structure is the same uh we define variable name sum like let me explain it so sum is here this this is the variable name you are defining now and command if else command which requires three three arguments so this part these parts are the same one and zero if if right one not zero and then we include the condition two conditions in this way which are connected by end right so it's intuitive this command is end command so two conditions are connected combined by end right so i uh, like uh, when like when you program uh, like uh, combining conditions is very important, very useful uh, code coding technique. Like uh, so, then uh, remember it is like this. And also, what you like, uh, you know, equally important command is or, right? So when you want to combine two conditions by or, then you have to use vertical bar, which is shift slash right uh up, right right next to enter uh button on the keyboard right so for example if you type like x smaller than one bar x greater than two that means this condition or uh, the other condition right so in this example in this example these two inequalities are connected by and 
both must be satisfied but uh, when you need like a uh, in in the future when you need to uh, define totally different things then you may need to use uh, or like this okay okay so among these three variables I showed you how to do these two variables no and some so degree is pretty obvious right you are going to use the same if else command or uh, with different conditions right so I believe it should be straightforward right so try that by yourself I'm not going to show you how to do that okay uh, so and after defining these variables in the homework I ask you to run a regression on like regression of earnings on these variables include height right and you will see it is not possible uh, you like it would be a it would be interesting to try a regression of earnings on all these three variables it is actually not well defined regression uh, theoretically so but also it would be a good experience to see what happens theoretically wrong model how how, how uh, what, what what it leads to in R so you will see an error message or something else so see what happens and think about what is the problem with that model right. okay okay the second part uh, second technique I'm going to show you today is joint hypothesis test right so we are going to regress earnings on height no and some these two variables we just defined so you are going to use three regressors of course uh, and intercept and here you would like to test whether education has zero impact on earnings or not right so I believe these two dummy variables have no impact on earnings so coefficient of no is zero and coefficient of sum is zero at the same time both are zero at the same time is my hypothesis which is a joint hypothesis about multiple coefficients okay and to do that to do this test um, uh, by the way we learned in class that hypothesis joint hypothesis test will lead to an F test statistic so F statistic will be our result and to do that to calculate that we are going to use linear hypothesis command linear hypothesis command which is a follow-up command to a regression model so you have to run a regression first and then use linear hypothesis command as a post estimation uh, procedure and to do that you are going to need a package called car I don't know why it is car but uh, anyhow the name of the package is car so you're going to use this command this line copy this line in your code and then of course after installing your package the package you have to load the package to use it uh, by like typing this library right so when I when I do when I code like it's always confusing here you have to use quotation marks but here not right that's also very confusing also install packages so you have to use plural form here as here anyhow it's a oh uh, uh, you cannot memorize everything just uh, get used to it or Google them if you are not, not certain and also another another annoying thing is H in your in the command is uppercase only H is uppercase linear L it does not start with an uppercase but in the middle it is a uh, an uppercase so you like you know R is case sensitive so you have to match the cases and remember it's not a typo uh, only H is uppercase okay anyhow if it, like if you mistype that uh, then you are going to see an error message and then uh, you have this think about this if it's correct okay linear hypothesis command requires now two arguments one is regression results and the other is hypothesis 
So you have to uh, you have to input a regression result first, and then you have to uh, you have to define what you want to test, right? Let me explain each of them. The first thing, the first argument is the regression results, and so as I said, before running linear hypothesis command, you have to have a regression first, right? Like this, for example, remember we are regressing earnings on height, no, and sum. So we have done this kind of regression in homework three. So you must be familiar with this LM command, linear model command. And like uh, here in this example, I set data name as HW4. So anyhow, like the result from this regression model, linear model, is saved into uh, an object named REG, right? So here I, uh, like you, you may change your name, you may change this name like REG1 or like whatever, whatever object, but you have to use the same object in this argument, right? So you you save this first, do this first, this this line should come first, and then uh, in a line, another line below, you have to do this, okay? So I don't worry about this part. It should be pretty straightforward, regression first, and then uh, hypothesis. And the second part, H0 is your hypothesis, and your hypothesis uh, should define what you're testing. In our example, we are testing two, uh, high, two equalities, right? So first, we are going to assign something, but this is C, starts with C, which means it is a column vector, right? So C means column vector, and the first, we, we, you may include more, like, uh, more, hypo more equalities if you had, your hypothesis is more uh, complicated, that is possible. But in this example, we have only two rows in this column vector, right? This is two by one vector, but you could make it like uh, more than two by one. That is also possible after, like if you put more commas. Anyhow, the first hypothesis is the coefficient of no variable is zero. Simply, you have to say no equal, the variable name equals zero. So then it means the coefficient of this variable is zero. And in here, don't forget to put quotation marks there. Otherwise, it does not recognize uh, it as a, as a sentence, like a one one object of one element of this vector. Of course, second, and you also include another uh, equality out there. And as I said, you could make it more complicated or uh, include more conditions. But in our example, this is what we need, okay? Okay, then just run this, right? Uh, of course, uh, by the way, of course, before you implement like linear hypothesis, you have to define H0 first. Define this first and then run uh, linear hypothesis, hypothesis later. So you have to do them in the correct order. And then you are going to get this result, right? Uh, uh, here you first check if your hypothesis is correctly entered, right? Exactly, no coefficient of no is zero, coefficient of sum is zero, and it, it shows what is the base model. The base model is earnings on height, no, and sum, which is correct. And then restricted model is based on your hypothesis, right? So this is unrestricted model with three regressors plus uh, intercept, but on top of that, you impose two variables have zero coefficients, that is restricted model. And then the, these, this is a table, the, the key result table. Now I will explain what this means, okay? So this table is actually this one, right? 
So one here, model one is restricted model, model two is unrestricted model. So one and two are restricted or unrestricted, right? So models. And then first column, residual degrees of freedom. Like 17, 17,868 and 866. And second column, uh, residual sum of squares from each model. And from the from this column, there are differences. So two is degrees of freedom, difference in degrees of freedom, and this is difference in sum of squared, sum of squares, and f statistic and p value. Okay, so uh, in more formal uh, table, this is what you got, what you will get from that from the linear hypothesis command. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay then, let me explain um, one by one. So first, residual degrees of freedom is literally the... Uh, so remember the degrees of freedom, if you had like say 100 observations, the sample size is the amount of information you begin with, but like uh, from there, you have to consume some information to estimate uh, some parameters. So, in the unrestricted model, there are two more parameters than the unrestricted model. I, I mean, I mean, uh, again, let me fix it. So, the unrestricted model has two more parameters to estimate than uh, the restricted one, right? So, unrestricted model has to consume two more informations. So, in the end, the residual degrees of freedom is uh, smaller by two because unrestricted model consumed two more coefficients, estimations, right? So restricted model has two more degrees of freedom than the unrestricted model because it did not need to uh, estimate two coefficients, right? Okay, right, so Anyhow, this is the, the, like, in mathematical term, it is n minus k. Uh, and residual sum of squares, it's literally the squared sum of the residuals, right? Um, so you may interpret this as the total amount of unexplained variation in the dependent variable, right? So unrestricted model, like, so you may understand it this way. Restricted model does not utilize education, but unrestricted model does use three variables. So it has three regressors, but restricted model has actually only one regressor because you assumed two of them are not included in the restricted model. So, so because the unrestricted model uses more variables, it has smaller prediction errors, right? smaller residuals, uh, it can explain more, right? So this is smaller and this is larger. So restricted model has larger part unexplained, uh, right? That is also natural. And from here, these are differences. So differences in degrees of freedom. Uh, so because your hypothesis includes two equalities, so that is the difference in the degrees of freedom, right? You are making two more assumptions or you are um, testing on two uh, parameters. So that is the difference in degrees of freedom. And some of difference in some of squares is literally difference in this, right? So because you are using, by using two more variable, two more variables, you can explain this much more, right? So by the way, it's uh, 10 to the 13, but it's 10 to the 11. So the difference is at the second decimal place here. So that's why the exponent is smaller here. Anyhow, so the difference, unrestricted model is always better in terms of residual sum of squares, but if the difference is small, then that means restriction is correct. If restriction was correct, then these two models would be similar in terms of some squares. So if this is small, 
small or close to zero, then your hypothesis is likely true. That is the basic idea of this approach. And following the formula you learned in, you can, you can find in the textbook, uh, it calculates F statistic, which is 400 something. And, uh, and it follows a uh, certain distribution. Uh, so anyhow, interpretation of this F statistic is the standardized difference between the hypothesis and the estimates, right? So the interpretation is basically the same as T statistic. You are comparing the hypothesis and the estimate, right? And you standardize them using the standard errors. But because you are handling two parameters, you have to take into account their correlation coefficients. So the formula is more complicated, but intuition is the same, standardized distance. If it is close to zero, that means the distance between these two are small. That means your hypothesis is consistent with the data. So if it is close to zero, uh, your hypothesis is likely true, right? So then, how can we tell how much close to zero is close enough? That is based on the p-value. So p-value is calculated based on a distribution, right? So in t-test, if it was t-statistic, uh, the probability was calculated from the standard normal distribution, but f-statistic is a little more complicated. So, uh, anyhow, uh, it is automatically calculated by R, so you don't need to worry too much about that. But its interpretation uh, was very difficult to understand p-value, but so I will use a wrong but useful interpretation. It is wrong, but it's not a big problem in, in interpreting the p-value. So, p-value could be interpreted as the probability that the hypothesis is true. So if the p-value is close to uh, 100%, that means your hypothesis is really, really likely true. But if it is close to zero like this, so you see it's uh, 0 .00, 16 zeros should come before two, right? So it's a really small number close to zero. So your hypothesis is uh, very unlikely to be true, right? So usually we compare this p-value probability to 5%, which is the significance level. So 5% is the standard significance level. And if this probability is smaller than that, we reject the null hypothesis. But in this case, it's 0 0.00016 zeros, right? So obviously your hypothesis is uh, rejected. So as a result, it has three stars because it is it is smaller than 1%, right? So uh, back to the case here. So three star, three stars are put between p-value, uh, three stars between zero and 0.1% and two stars between 0.1% and point uh, and 0.1 percent and 1 percent and blah blah blah, right? So three star means it is in between zero and 0 0.001, right? Smaller than 0 001, and yes, it is less than 0 001, right? So here, uh, by the way, I got less than from here, right? So okay, um, these are pretty much it for this homework. So all the other parts of the code uh, are the same as homework, the earlier homework. So, but now let me finish with uh, giving you the idea how you are, you can uh, implement these things. So in your code, your codes will have these steps. First, you are going to load the data. Of course, you download the data and load the data from that directory. So, uh, to load the data, uh, of course, the data would be in Excel file. You will need to, you may need to install and load this read Excel package, right? Remember, read Excel was the main 
a package to import Excel file. And if you had, if you are not certain how to do it, you can find all your homework, right? Uh, or you can just copy your code from your all your homework answers. After loading the data, you are going to define the dummy variables as I explained earlier. So define three dummy variables. Okay, so you can go back to the earlier uh, slides and find uh, the required commands uh, you need to use. And then after defining those dummy variables, run regressions. Uh, if you read the homework, you are going to you will see that you you are going to need several regressions, right? So uh, by changing the regressors, you will need to implement different regressions, and that should be simple. Use lm linear model command and just change uh, different uh, regressors. Of course, you have to save them to different names, right? You are going to use different names. Uh, so that you can save all the regression results. And after running the regressions, implement, carry out a hypothesis test. And I explained that earlier, uh, how to do that. But here you are going to need cart package. So uh, for the first time you run this, you have to install the package and load the package. Okay, so do this, include this in your code code. And, and then define your hypothesis and then use linear hypothesis command. Remember, when you run linear hypothesis command, you need your regression results you defined here and you need also need hypothesis, okay? So these are what you have to do in your code. I believe it should be very similar to what you have done in homework three. Of course, the variable names data name, data file are different, but some uh, minor differences. And if you need help, please let me know. Uh, so usually most of the bugs, like almost always your code will have some bugs. So debugging is more time consuming job than writing the, the draft of your code. So, and usually it is not easy to find what you did wrong. So just show me then it, it's, 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 it can be more obvious to other people what is wrong. So usually some typos or like uh, uppercase, lowercase problems, uh, uh, like these things like that. So uh, don't hesitate to shoot me an email if you have any trouble. Okay, thank you for watching and see you later. Bye.